Hi again guys and welcome to episode 2 of Spirit of Le Mans, this time featuring one of my personal favourite Le Mans cars, not necessarily one of the most successful, but one of my favourites nonetheless, the Panos Esperante GTR1. Now this car really does divide opinion, mainly because of its looks. I can understand why people don't like the look of the car, it, it is a bit oddball, looks kind of like Batman's weekend racer, but personally I like the look of the car. I like pretty much all Panos cars because I like cars that are, tr are truly different and Panos definitely is different. Um, not one of the most successful Lamar cars in the game but one of my favourites nonetheless. So uh, yeah, let's take it out to the track and get straight into it. So first of all here we are on Monaco, our city testing ground. Now. Let's just get straight into the ratings on this car, because as much as I love it, it is one of the most flawed cars on this list. It's not necessarily a bad design, it's definitely one of the most challenging though. Now, for acceleration, I'm going to give this car 3 out of 5, because although it is very powerful, it's also significantly heavier than most of the other prototypes and Group C's, LMPs, and even the other GT1s. So a 3 out of 5 for acceleration. For low speed handling, which is what you mainly need on city tracks, I'm also unfortunately going to have to give it a 3, because as much as I love the car, the low speed handling kind of lets it down. And I think the main reason for that is because, although it is technically a mid-engine car, it's a front mid-engine, which means there's not a huge amount of grip over the rear wheels, which results in excessive wheel spin which kind of hampers its low speed handling. It means that you feel like you're never really unleashing the car's true potential on tight city tracks. It really needs wide open roads to use all of that power without worrying about excessive wheel spin. For brakes I'm going to give it probably a 4 out of 5 because the brakes are pretty good on this car. They're not perfect but considering its weight and power they do a good job of stopping the car. So overall on the city track, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. So let's go on to the next track. So here we are now on Ascari. So this is more mid-range acceleration, mid-range handling, uh, more technical but still moderately high speed corners. So how does the Esperante perform on a track like this? Well, straight off the bat, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 for mid-range handling because although it's not very good on a city track it is pretty good on this type of track it, it starts to feel more comfortable on this track the handling is quite predictable I'm going to talk about that later and that predictable handling makes you uh, quite confident about using this car on this track the car feels like it's dependable it's not going to suddenly freak out on you um, so yeah I'm going to give it a four uh, for mid-range handling and I'm also going to give it a 4 out of 5 overall for technical tracks like Ascari. So pretty respectable considering how low it's scored on a city track. So kind of like the XJR9 that I did the first video for, this car does come into its own more on higher speed tracks. The steering is heavier than most of the other, most of the other Lamar prototypes. Um, but overall, it's it's a good car. The brakes are good. The handling is, like I said, unsurprising. It's quite a stable car. The biggest letdown of the car is its weight, but again, I'll talk more about that later. But overall, yeah, it's it's a good car. So on Ascari and on technical tracks in general, I'm going to give this car a 4 out of 5. So finally, let's go now to Spa for a roundup. So here we are now on the final testing grounds at Spa. Now as I've said before, this is where most Lamar cars really come into their own and with the GTR1 it's no exception. Now I would say that this car actually performs slightly better on a mid-range technical track than it does on these high speed tracks. I'm not saying it doesn't perform well here at Spa, it does perform very well, but it almost feels better on Ascari than it does here. 
Now, I'm going to give it the same rating on high speed track as I did for a mid range technical track, and that is four out of five stars, which is still good considering its significant weight disadvantage. It weighs around 250 kilos more than most of the other um, Lamar prototype racers, sometimes even 350 kilos more, which for a racing car is a huge disadvantage. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, the handling is very um, dependable, reliable, predictable, and although it is heavy, mainly because of the car's weight at higher speeds, it's it's quite good to drive. It handles almost like a touring car rather than a prototype, which sometimes I think is not necessarily better, but it's refreshingly different. It's a completely different driving experience to pretty much any of the other prototypes, Group Cs, LMPs or GT1s. So yeah, overall I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 on this track. For top speed I'm going to give the car a 3 out of 5. Now it's not a slow car, but it's nowhere near as quick top end as many of the other prototypes. Top speed is about 260 with, lowest, with the lowest downforce setting, so even then it's not as quick as some of the others. So unfortunately, I'm only giving it a 3 out of 5 for that. But that's it for the testing, so now let's go back to the garage for a final roundup of the car. So, overall, the Esperante is definitely not a bad car. Like I said at the start of the video, it's not necessarily one of the strongest Le Mans contenders, but overall it's a pretty decent car to drive. As I just mentioned, handling characteristics are slightly more like a, a touring car or a GT class car than a prototype. But, as I mentioned before, the handling is predictable, which, although heavy, does mean that the car doesn't surprise you with things like snap over steer, suddenly throw you off the track. You may end up going off of the track, but at least you know that you are going to. And the reason why is because you didn't judge the corner properly, it's not the car's fault. So overall, definitely not the strongest contender, but a very good car nonetheless. I'd say the car's best point is, well actually I'd say its best point and its worst point are technically the same, and they are its handling, but in different ways. The best point is that the handling is so predictable and it never really surprises you or shocks you, which means that you can learn to drive the car um, quite well because the characteristics don't really change on most tracks so you can get a good feel over time for what the car is going to do. At the same time the main thing that gives it that handling characteristic which is its weight and the, the layout of the drivetrain being front mid-engined is also its downside because it does have a lot lot more weight than any of the other Lamar cars and it does show especially on city tracks and that is its main downfall. That handling, or that weight, does affect its handling. It makes it heavier. Although predictable, a heavy handling car is never going to be quite as quick around the track as a, a loose handling car or even a car that experiences some oversteer. But overall, it's I would say it's not a great car, but it is a good car. And I would recommend this car to people who are looking for something maybe challenging but more something that's just different so yeah that's about it really so if you're looking for a challenge if you feel like you may be a bit too quick and you want to give yourself a bit of a kind of a disadvantage compared to your opponents to make it more interesting then yeah i'd highly recommend trying out the esperante so that's about all for this car so as always thanks for watching